Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and Doctor Strange introduced the MCU to magic, sass, and ways to defeat villains without a Hulk smash. The madness of Stevie Strange has been a mystery I've explored, oh, say, 14,605 times ever since the old days of my 2016 breakdown. But uh, YouTube took that down. Too much music. So I'm back, and I've come to bargain, because I found a ton of new missable details to open our eye to the Sorcerer Supreme's future in the multiverse of madness. The film opens in Camartage. Caecilia steals a page of the Book of Cagliostro. Now these sacred books have glowing cover pieces, almost as if they're alive. When Caecilius lets it thud to the floor, it's almost like two souls in this library lost chunks. The Ancient One blocks their escape. Hypocrite! His charge is because she uses energy from the Dark Dimension to manipulate reality, something she masks with her hood here. Later we see the Dark Dimension forehead symbol that she was hiding. Composer Michael Giacchino's music builds into a cacophony of horns. like the essence of what the f am I looking at? He's evoking Don Davis's score from The Matrix. That film's an inspiration for how this movie later compares the rules of reality to programs in source code. Caecilius opens a portal and if you look closely, one of his zealots falls right past, missing it into the sky forever. Our first shot of our hero, Stephen Strange, shows his hand hands, giving those of us in May 2020 a handy PSA. In this film, Strange's hands are a synecdoche, a part of him that represents his whole self and his character evolution. In Act 1, he's so goddamn proud of these ticklers, reflecting his ego, until the hands are shattered along with his pride. In Act 2, his multiverse confusion is reflected with infinite hands. And in Act 3, a hand close-up reflects him finally connecting with his mentor's wisdom, followed by a return to the hand-washing close-up to wash her blood off his hands and his hands cupping the face of the woman he mistreated. Strange shows off his mastery of album release years and he makes West cover his watch as he operates. This film is obsessed with time, of course to foreshadow the big reveal of the time stone, but also to establish this film's deeper meaning as a story about conquering death itself. Strange's goal in this moment isn't really to save a life, it's to say f you to inevitable mortality, but a ticking clock reminds him that he is finite. A lesson that serves him well as he joins the Infinity Saga. Hey, if you were given a chance to be the hero of your own fantasy, you'd take that chance, right? Of course you would! And that's why you should play Raid Shadow Legends! It's where dark fantasy meets realism, and then those two things have a baby, and the baby is a game where you can be a door fighting a lizard man. Raid is free to download and play, and available on both mobile and PC. I like to play the dungeon battles, where you get a squad of your champions, and you get to take on a boss and his goons for a reward. You can upgrade your champions and outfit them with cool weapons and armor, you can join a clan and fight the clan boss, and you can jump into the arena and fight against other raid players. Challenge yourself in the ongoing tournaments, fighting the Spider's Den, the Almighty Fire Knight, or his nasty boy, the Notorious Dragon. And now in Raid, Patch 1.15 is coming in May! And with it, you will be able to compete in the brand new arena tournament, earn points according to your tier, and win awesome rewards in the local and global tournament. Speaking of rewards, the more you play, the more rewards you get. So what are you waiting for? Go to the video description, click on the special links, and if you are a new player, you will get 100,000 silver, plus one free champion, Grumbler! Who wouldn't want to go into battle with this stout, gimly looking dude on your side? All this treasure will be waiting for you here. Those rewards are available to new players only for the next 30 days. Good luck, and I'll see you there. Strange's fancy home likens him to Tony Stark, whose former residence of Avengers Tower we can see in the skyline here. We linger on Strange's collection of watches, similar to the one Tony Stark had in Iron Man 2, but whereas that movie showed Tony selling off the watch given to him by Obadiah Stane, Strange keeps his watches like prized heirlooms, a poor attempt to master time. Throughout all this, he keeps his watch from Christine, similarly to Steve Rogers' Peggy Compass. It's his guiding force that breaks to reflect his break from his ticking clock obsession. His award is dated 2016, as is his watch, a specific day, February 2nd, 2016, making this, yes, Groundhog Day, which I pointed out for years ago, foreshadows the Groundhog Day style time loops of this movie's climax. To get a good sense of the timeline in this movie, the tree in the Camartage courtyard tells the passage of time from spring to autumn to winter, suggesting that Strange spent the time in 2016-2017 during Civil War secluded in wizard training. Strange listens to Interstellar Overdrive by Pink Floyd, 
a band who actually used Doctor Strange artwork in their album art for A Saucer Full of Secrets. Later, Strange wears a shirt from Pink Floyd's Sid Barrett's solo album, The Madcap Laughs. His assistant passes along some cases. I've got a 35-year-old Air Force colonel, crushed his lower spine in some kind of experimental arm or mid-thoracic burst fracture. Many thought this could have been referring to Air Force Colonel James Rhodes, who boomed out his back during Civil War. Director Scott Derrickson said no, but it could also refer to the Hammer test pilot in Iron Man 2, but I guess that would mean that patient went like several years without surgery. The next patient? I have a 68-year-old female with an advanced brainstem glioma. Yeah, you want me to screw up my perfect record? Definitely not. Mm, Strange dickishly says an elderly woman isn't worth operating on, yet later in this film, he does everything he can to save an ancient woman, even when her death does technically ruin his record. And the final patient. How about a 22-year-old female with an electronic implant in her brain to control schizophrenia struck by lightning? Hmm, that does sound interesting. Mm -hmm. At one point we wondered if this could have been Carol Danvers, who did have schizophrenia type false memories implanted in her brain by the Cree. Of course, her origin was in 1989. But there was this long gap in her timeline from 1995 through 2018. Who knows, maybe we'll see some future side story where in 2016 she and Storm got in a fight. He wrecks due to distracted driving. The end credits actually have a PSA about distracted driving, which is a fun nod to Strange's later joke about warnings coming too late. You know, you really should have stolen the whole book because the warnings the warnings come after the spells. Strange struggles to write his name, an image lit to directly from a J. Michael Straczynski comics panel, and he finds miracle patient Jonathan Payneborn, who plays B-Ball, gotta be an in-joke to Benjamin Bratt's previous superhero movie. Whoa. In Nepal, Mordo takes Strange to meet the Ancient One, who was expecting him. Isn't that why you're here? You've undergone many procedures. Seven, right? Mm -hmm. In Endgame, she confirms that she had been waiting for him since at least 2012. You're about five years too early. Stephen Strange is currently performing surgery about 20 blocks that way. But Strange is skeptical. There's no such thing as spirit. We are made of matter and nothing more. You're just another tiny, momentary speck within an indifferent universe. These words will be repeated exactly by Strange's future enemy. What about the people you killed? Tiny, momentary specs within an indifferent universe. Strange's biggest enemy is his own ego. The Ancient One knocks him to the astral plane, a move repeated with Hulk in Endgame, and she sends him spiraling through the multiverse. We gotta break down this acid trip frame by frame with a trip so down. It begins with the Ancient One saying, Open your eyes. She's referring to the third eye concept, the eye that opens the spirit to divine consciousness. But it's also a clue for how Strange will conquer death by opening his eye of Agamotto. Like Tony Stark, Strange breaks from Earth's atmosphere, freaked out, and then he taps this butterfly, which if you think about it, it's the final evolved stage of the recurring cocoon imagery throughout Marvel Phase 2. They don't need to be protected. They need to evolve. Everything in the MCU has evolved towards the multiverse being real, and now that cocoon is hatching. Derrickson confirmed influences like Stanley Kubrick's Dimension Travel in 2001 A Space Odyssey and the wormhole travel in Contact, which you can see in the wormhole design in the background, and the way Strange's face bends and then pulls through reality, just like Jodie Foster's did. At one point, Strange disintegrates into dust and then reforms, much like he'll do in Infinity War and when he returns in Endgame. And then note that the sexy hand hell is initially a cavern with Strange's face all over the wall. His hands represent his self, and right now his self is infinite and confused. Strange briefly floats through the quantum realm that Ant-Man recently visited. The Ancient One's VO calls this an example of a dimension that's... Some benevolent and life-giving. In Ant-Man and the Wasp, they get quantum healing energy from here, and there's some subatomic life with a hidden civilization. And of course, the Avengers use the time vortexes in this realm to restore the lives Thanos took. We also get our first look at the Dark Dimension and Dormammu, which was based on Steve Ditko's comic artwork and a black light painting that Derrickson had in his office. The Kamartage Wi-Fi password is Shambhala, a nod to Into Shambhala, a Doctor Strange graphic novel that deals with the death of the Ancient One, as he will in this film. The new librarian is Wong, who in the comics is actually the son of Hamir the Hermit, Master Hamir in this movie. Strange compares his one name name to Beyonce, which, which Wong listens to later. Wong's surrender to the material world is just one of my favorite recurring bits. I wouldn't say no to a tuna melt. And again, 
and the rare books hang in these chains. Our friend Linaceer on Discord put an out during our watch along in this movie how books are chained up like this in medieval scriptoriums and in Oxford's current library. You should join our Discord, by the way. It's fun. And beneath the book of Cagliostro, there's another empty spot for some book that's been removed. Many believe this could have been The Dark Hold, the Marvel spell book that showed up in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Strange manscapes down to a goatee. His look in the comics was actually based on Vincent Price. That's why Stephen Strange's middle name is Vincent. Mordo teaches Strange about relics. This is the staff of the Living Tribunal. The real Living Tribunal is a giant deity who judges the multiverse. There was actually gonna be a scene in Infinity War in which Doctor Strange's wizard duel with Thanos would have featured a Living Tribunal cameo in a trial that would have judged Thanos as guilty. But uh, this staff just seems to be named after the figure because again, he's, he's a giant. He also shows off the bolting boots of Voltor, based on the vapors of Voltor, maybe the vipers of Voltor in the comics. Strange uses these again in Infinity War with Peter Quill. Strange uses the eye of Agamotto to manipulate time with this apple. It progresses like a flip book with each bite taken out of it accompanied by a munch sound effect, a munch that they reverse munch when it goes in reverse. The filmmakers chose the apple symbol to symbolize the forbidden fruit essence of Strange stealing this ancient godly wisdom. This also shows us how time loops were localized to whatever you're focusing on. So when Thanos rewinds the clock on Wanda destroying the Mind Stone, he doesn't rewind all of time and all of his past actions before that, he just rewinds the red juicy flesh he wants to take a bite out of. Mordo and Wong berate him. Temporal manipulations can create branches in time, unstable dimensional openings, spatial paradoxes, time loops. You want to get stuck reliving the same moment over and over forever or never having existed at all? These are the same rules of time travel that forced the Avengers to return the Infinity Stones back to their places of origin in the timeline and endgame. The relics in the New York Sanctum include a helmet that looks like Black Knight's. Black Knight is a legacy hero of Dane Whitman in the upcoming Eternals film. Kaecilius kills Daniel Drum, who in the comics is brother to Jericho Drum, aka Brother Voodoo. Strange tries to use the Brazier of Bomb Galiath, which in the comics is used for transportation and concealment when they're hiding from Mephisto. It actually shows up in the Collector's Vault on Guardian's Mission Breakout ride at Disneyland. Strange binds Kaecilius in this kinky device, confirmed to be the Crimson Bands of Citarac, which in the comics is a red lasso spell. Kaecilius rants to Strange and stirs his desire to conquer death. For well beyond time, because time is what enslaves us. Time is an insult. Death is an insult. Strange starts to see why Wong previously slayed about Dormammu. And he hungers for Earth most of all. The fact that our dimension has time that things die is what makes us unique and desirable to those other dimensions. But Kaiselius grins. What's funny is that you've lost your sling ring. This sneaky jewel snatching gotcha is a similar trick that Strange hints to Tony in Endgame when Tony slips the weapon off Thanos' fingers to get the last laugh. Strange also mirrors Stark by having his lady fix his heart. The image of Astral Strange watching over his physical body get operated on was lifted from the Oath comics. Strange flees Kaecilius in a trippy foot chase. This starts with him reaching an impossible intersection, then the camera swoops around to reveal that cross street is on a higher plane, and then back into the close-up. It's actually similar to the impossible staircase shot in Inception. Kaecilius comes up behind him, shoving mirror wall shards out of his way, and then he rotates the city so that Strange and Mordo smack into a bus with it's Stanley. <laughs> that is hilarious. He reads Aldous Huxley's The Doors of Perception, an essay on a psychedelic drug trip, one of the many writings that inspired the Doctor Strange comics. They run up the side of a building that bends in waves, kind of like the building Trinity's helicopter crashes into in the Matrix. Avengers Tower once again shows up in a little detail here on the folded street. A cab totally cuts off another car by turning into the wrong lane. I guess drivers are a-holes in every dimension. The Ancient One assembles this game board made up of city surfaces, including the train platforms of Wall Street, Church Street, Columbus Circle, and the Museum of Natural History. But Kaecilia stabs through his own zealot to kill her, and she falls. Boom. <laughs> Mm, too soon. The Ancient One beautifully slows her final moments. I've spent so many years peering through time, looking at this exact moment, but I can't see past it. I've prevented countless terrible futures, and after each one there's always another, and they all lead here, but never further. I never saw your future only its possibilities. Strange could see past his dusting because there remained at least one future possibility in which the Avengers brought him back and Stark made sure he'd stay back. But that's not the case for her, so she can't see past her death. She leaves him with this critical lesson. It's not about you. 
Nice side of the camera swings around the Ancient One to show how Strange is finally seeing through her mind and shifting his perspective about his own ego. In the final battle, Wong gears up with the other sorcerers. He bears the Wand of Watoom, an artifact from the comics. There's also a shot here of Tina Minoru, mother of Nico Minoru in the comics. Kaecilius arrives with some zealots. Notice their portal came from the Saharan Desert. Earlier, Strange trapped one of these zealots in that desert location, meaning Kaecilius leaves no zealot behind, except ones that fall up forever. Mordo feels betrayed. While she drew on its power to steal centuries of life, she did what she thought was right. The bill comes due. He's quoting the 2016 comics in which Strange received warnings like this for wielding magic, attracting anti-magic scientists, the Empirical, who depowered the sorcerers of Earth, which is what Mordo claims as his new MO in the post credit scene. Too many sorcerers. Strange uses the Time Stone to rewind the destruction of Hong Kong, and to match this reverse motion, Shikino's score plays in reverse as well. The reversing chaos creates some awesome obstacles. Strange and Kaecilius get pushed back by reassembling barrels. A zealot fighting Mordo is distracted by a flaming gas line so she doesn't see the returning manhole cover that had exploded off it, and that dummy gets flushed back in with the waters of a ruptured lobster tank. Youch. Mordo watches as the boot of a crash victim gushes back in into the guy's head as he flies back into the car he just crashed out of. This helps Mordo get a bearing of what's going on so that he can use this environment, trapping one zealot on the other side of glass and Kaecilius behind a wall. So unlike past movies where the goal is to close a portal to keep the chaos out, Derrickson wanted to explore what would happen if the hero flies through the portal to stop the chaos in a different way. Dormammu. I've come to bargain. After hearing Kaecilius repeat how Dormammu is detached from time, he remembers the Ancient One's final words. We don't get to choose our time. Death is what gives life meaning to know your days are numbered. Your time is short. Yes, death and time are not our world's weaknesses. They are what make our world powerful. So Strange weaponizes time, using a Groundhog Day style time loop to drive Dormammu insane. Notice on the second loop, we don't cut from Strange and a new Strange just hops up in the same frame because this is how it looks from Dormammu's point of view. It's confusing, there's no cut. It's just one endless hell moment with an immortal whack-a-mole. In total, Strange dies 12 times on screen, but like in Groundhog Day, it is implied that it could have been thousands. Pain's an old friend. By the way, Dormammu is voiced by Benedict Cumberbatch. Again, Strange's battle in this movie is between him and his own ego. Also, they didn't want to pay another actor when they had Smog already on payroll. And he ends up not defeating Dormammu, but bargaining with him to stay the hell away, because as the Ancient One said, We never lose our demons, Mordo. We only learn to live above them. Wong confirms Aya Agamotto holds the Time Stone in the post credit scene inducts Strange into the Infinity Saga in a clip from Thor Ragnarok. Strange now wears his yellow gloves from the comics, and I love the practical sleight of hand with the T turning into the full pint glass in the same shot, meaning the stage hand had to be right out of frame to do that switch. But the film's final moments show Strange with Christine's watch, his face still broken, his hands still scarred and trembling. He never fully healed his flesh, but he conquered death by deciding that pain is an old friend that he could live with. Cumberbatch maintains this tremble every time he returns as Strange, down to the moment he signals Stark in Endgame. And that Avengers partnership is hidden in the final shot, looking down on the Sanctum Sanctorum on Bleecker Street. With New York's financial district in the background, that makes this shot coming from the Northeast, exactly the angle of Avengers Tower in Midtown, as if we are standing on its observation deck looking down to Bleecker Street, wondering, what is that strange window? Now, the Avengers have moved upstate by now, but the beacon that ended the first Avengers now shines down on the newest protector of this reality. Quick reminder that to offset our small business's financial struggles, we have partnered with a wonderful hand sanitizer, just a nice thing you can do to help this company stay alive. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter, at EA Voss, follow New Rockstars, and subscribe to see me dig through that big old corpse pile in Guardians Volume 2 that I'm pretty sure James Gunn is just using to drive me insane. Thank you.